Every year, 165 million Americans visit their primary care clinic to get a flu shot. The process is safe, effective, and an otherwise unremarkable day for most people. This ordinary visit shows the value most of us believe vaccines offer to our society. After all, they've eradicated smallpox, polio, measles, and mumps. What's to fear? But what about when vaccines fail? What if one vaccine failed so badly it lasted only four years before getting flushed from hospitals across the country? Wouldn't you want to know if you had this vaccine and what went wrong? This is a true story. In 1998, SmithKline Pharmaceuticals developed Limerix, a vaccine that promised to treat a horrendous chronic neurological infection that you might know as Lyme disease. During the 1980s, the US had seen Lyme infection rates rise by 390%. There was clearly a problem. By the late 90s, SmithKline were ready with a new weapon to halt the Lyme offensive. But instead of Lyme disease disappearing into the history books, and Limerix raking in millions in profits, four years later, SmithKline was freezing its production, and newspapers were warning of its dangers. By 2002, Limerix was all but forgotten, and Lyme disease continued to rise. So what went wrong? The true answer is complex. Limerix failed so badly because of three issues. Let's go for a walk outside. First, the guidelines for administering the vaccine were a mess. After SmithKline found the cure for Lyme disease, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices gave it a permissive recommendation. This is good. It means the vaccine is safe and effective for the public. But it also meant it would not be added to our scheduled immunizations, like influenza measles. Instead, Limerix would only get considered for groups at high risk of Lyme disease. But why? Well, in 2000, 90% of all Lyme infections occurred in only nine states. The CDC saw this as a localized problem. And the precautionary principle meant it shouldn't be necessary for someone living in Los Angeles to get a Lyme vaccination unless they have the unusual winter hobby of hunting deer in northern Michigan. So instead of schedules, the CDC left it up to individual doctors to decide who should get the vaccine. But who should get a vaccine? Well, in 1990, doctors were no better at deciding that than the CDC. In fact, many doctors were not even aware that Limerix existed. In 2000, doctors administered approximately 750,000 Lyme vaccines. For comparison, 162 million flu vaccines were given that year. It turned out a cure for a rural tick disease wasn't exactly as exciting or lucrative as a cure for baldness. But besides poor initial vaccine sales, Limerix was about to hit an even bigger problem. In a three-story building just north of Atlanta, Georgia, a group of scientists worked tirelessly at a little discussed organization called VAERS. VAERS stands for Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, and their entire job is to investigate every adverse reaction reported about a vaccine. Between 1998 and 2000, VAERS received 905 reports about Limerix. To give a little context, during that time, doctors administered a million and a half Limerix vaccines, which would bring the percent reported to about 0.060% or 1 in 6,000. And two thirds of those reported were for simple things like swelling. Nothing unusual, that's the most common reported reaction to every vaccine. But a few reports, just more than a sprinkle, indicated that Limerix could lead to arthritis. So the NCIP did what it is designed to do. And in the spring of 2001, they launched an investigation. But before Varus could so much as reallocate a microscope, the media caught wind of its investigation and began to run headlines. Concern grows over reaction to Lyme shots. Lyme vaccine may cause problems. Lyme disease vaccine safety is questioned. Those are all real headlines from 2001. Now what these problems were, we never said. And in retrospect, its safety was never questioned by anyone of actual authority. It was mainly transcendental mothers over biochemists raising questions. But as the media published sensational headlines, particularly around a new, obscure vaccine, the public's sensational beliefs swelled. 
Soon, each was feeding off each other, creating a virtuous cycle of concern. Until at the dawn of the 21st century, when a class action lawsuit was filed against Smith Klein for not disclosing, quote, possible complications arising from Limerick's. But this lawsuit beat Smith Klein's head with a unique legal bat. The problem was Limerick's permissive recommendation. Because Limerick's did not get added to immunization schedules, it meant it would not be protected, unlike other life saving vaccines, by the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. The name, I meant, not very good. It already sounds a little guilty. Vaccine injury? But in reality, the NCVIP was made in response to stupid vaccine lawsuits. You see, historically, when too many lawsuits were filed against any vaccine, even absent proof they caused harm, the cost of fighting that in court had led companies to either halt production or raise the price of the vaccine for people who needed it most. Americans love to scream when drug companies raise prices. The NCVIP keeps vaccines cheap for those of us in the States, which is good. But through accident or oversight, because Limerix was not protected by the NCVIP, it meant people, even those not affected, could sue Smith Klein directly, which they did for vast sums of money. It wasn't worth the headache to them. They were being sued over a vaccine that was effective. The media was demonizing them, and nobody was taking it anyway. So what did Smith Klein do? They bailed out. Smith Klein withdrew the only Lyme disease vaccine on Earth, despite the fact that both pre and post safety data, VAERS completed their investigation, showed zero increase in chronic arthritis from those who received the vaccine. Today, there are no vaccines to prevent Lyme disease. Except for your dog, the Lyme vaccine still exists for Fluffy, there is unlikely to be another one for humans, not due to lack of need, but due to Limerix's failure in the court of public opinion, which is important. So why did Limerix fail? Why do we not have a treatment for a disease we knew how to cure in the past? One is poor administration guidelines. Second is a lack of protection from frivolous lawsuits. And third is a media cycle that picked up on the voices of a few concerned citizens without much counter-narrative from experts. Lamyric's failure was not one of efficacy, but one of convincing the public of its necessity. As a drug, Lamyric's worked. If you got the vaccine, you're better for it. But if the goal of a vaccine is to protect the most amount of people, it failed. Vaccines work partially through herd protection, and it was never able to sway enough people to get it. Smith Klein should have been smarter about human nature. Smith Klein never effectively advertised Limerix. Doctors were never fully informed of its benefits and necessity. No campaign was launched to combat the disinformation. And so the public is left with only one narrative. Lyme vaccine is potentially dangerous. When this is all a person hears, it's entirely reasonable for them to be suspicious. We think of advertising as bad. Make the camel 30 day mile. But often it's a necessary evil. If Smith Klein had advertised Limerix as safe for the public and launched a campaign of better information, Limerix would have worked. Limerix should have been marketed to the whole public, not just doctors, and experts brought out on TV to confirm its safety. Smith Klein did none of this, and we as a community lost our one cure for a disease that will hurt tens of thousands of people next year.